Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to Back Away From The Donkey and Back Books. I'm here with Ruby, who I can't stop barking while I'm recording, so she's now with me. Uh, this is Ruby the Pom, and this is a tag for Tag Tuesday. And I was tagged last week by uh, Genre Books, and if you've not been across this channel, pop across, I'll put a link below. And this tag is a Girl Scout cookie tag that was originally done by Melinda at Web of Stories. I'm afraid I don't know her channel, so I'm going to have to go and check that out. I've got, I'll put the link below to it. So I've got a piece of paper in front of me with all the prompts. But because we are British, uh, me generally Scottish, uh, we have to, we don't understand Girl Scout cookies. So I'm going to change them all. These are going to be good, solid UK-based biscuits. So this is the biscuit tag, the Girl Scout biscuit tag. So... The prompts. What are you doing, Ruby? You don't want me to do this? You want to look out the window, don't you? And bark at random things. That's what you do. Hmm? Hmm? You pomps are a bit of a main in the arse, aren't you? So the first one was originally trefoils, and I have no idea what a trefoil is. So I've changed this to bourbon biscuits. And it's a classic novel that you love. Um... The term classic is always a bit of a problem sometimes, because what is a classic? So if I count anything before 1904, or the Second World War, uh, I go down the H.G. Wells route. And so, if I pick my favourite Wells book, it is The Island of Dr. Morrow, which I absolutely adore. And if you've not read that one, if you've read all the other Wells but not read that one, read that one. So H.G. Wells. What are you doing, Rubes? Hey. So question number two is lemon ups. I don't know what a lemon up is, so I picked Garibaldi's. The good old Garibaldi's or dead flies in a biscuit, as it looks like. Uh, a book you find inspiring. Well, I've picked a non-fiction book. And a non-fiction book is An Evil Cradling by Brian Keenan, who was kept as a hostage in Beirut in the uh, 80s early 90s and it's just an incredible book if you've not read it it's well worth reading it's quite traumatic and he wrote it and he was kept there i think nearly two years i can't remember off the top of my head because i've not read it for a while but it is a very inspiring book just his whole attitude he was a journalist and he was kidnapped and kept hostage there as a lot of people were at the time what are you doing i need to look at the list uh question three is s'mores and I don't really know what s'mores are. <laughs> I've got no idea. Is a marshmallow a s'more? I don't know. You Americans, tell me. Uh, so instead of s'mores, we are going to have malted milk. The classic that is a malted milk biscuit. And it's a comforting book. Well, a book that I go back to, and it's almost like a comfort read, is Raymond Feist's Magician. Uh, in the UK it was published as One Book Magician. I think in the States it was published as Magician, Apprentice and Master. Stop wriggling. If I put you down, you're going to start barking again, aren't you? There's nothing going on out there. But yeah, so Magician, Raymond Feist. Uh, it's a great, great fantasy book. It's about the pug, which is named a apprentice who rises to become a magician between sort of two planets. And as much as it retreads some ground, there's a lot of original stuff. And he's just a really nice... I've always found Raymond Feist books a really nice read. A really nice, straightforward, comfort read. So next we have question four, which is down here is Adventure Falls, which I have no idea what they are either. So I'm going to put Custard Creams. An adventurous book. Uh, it's what do you mean? A book, I'm trying to work out what people mean, where a book about adventure or an adventurous book. So I'm going to go with a book that's adventurous with prose. And this book is um, Deep Wheel Orcadia by Harry Josephine Giles. And... It is about the space station, but the most adventurous thing about it is it's written in Orcadian dialect. Uh, I'm going to put an example on here because I've got it. Uh, if you're going to read it, I suggest actually listen to it and do the uh, audible bit about it. And it's about a space station. But I said it's written in Orcadian dialect. If you don't know, I live in Orkney. And... My only disappointment about it is it's in parallel with like an English translation, which 
I think they almost sort of did a rabbit in the headlights thing and blinked a bit. So they needed that. Because if you go for books like uh, Anthony Burgess' Clockwork Orange, which is all written in a, a slang of the time, after you start reading it, you get into it and you start understanding it. And it's the same way when you read Shakespeare, similar sort of thing. And with Orcadian dialect, it's a dialect of Scots. Uh, and after a while, you, you sort of dial into it. I said, I've lived here for over 20 years. And when you come across to, um, especially the older Orcadians who uh, speak a lot of dialect, you just dial into it and you can understand it perfectly well. Uh, what you discover here are in all the islands, all the little individual islands, like I'm on the biggest one, which um, unimaginably it's called mainland. <laughs> but if you go to the ones like at the Shatham Street, West Ray Hoy, uh, each island always had its own little dialect. The accents are slightly different and the dialects are slightly different. Uh, don't notice it as much nowadays because it's uh, travelling and people going through, but it's interesting. So if you want a really interesting, sort of challenging read, Deep Will Arcadia, Harry Joseph and Giles, about a space station, it's science fiction. Uh, but I said, and you hear the prose. And I will put you a little clip up of what it sounds like. And get us thinking. What way to explain the station now? That scant the lighting, that scrimp the tie. Ivan does fashion at whether or no her vules will come him. Inger rubs her clipper head and thinks, far days tent the harlot, acre the trade, and only the kirk is ever full for praying. Ivan burls a pod in his lang fingers and watches the ship link into Megan Wick's muckle door. A cathedral of girders and stances opening into the hearth. Anger counts the yawl. Ivan minds on his years on the Mars Arcadia ship. I hope you enjoyed that. So now we're going to go to the Samoas. Which I know, don't even know what these are either. So I'm going to pick the infamous sports biscuits I used to love as a child. Oh. And we want a book that bends two or more genres. So I'm going to pick Isaac Asimov's Elijah Bailey novels, Caves of Steel, uh, Robots of Dawn, Hello, and The Naked Sun. I said those in the wrong order. And these are, if you don't know about them, they are part of the rob Robots novel, but they are about Elijah Bailey, a Detective from Earth solving crimes uh, to do with the outer planets. Uh, a lot more to them than that, but if you want to know more, ask me or do a bit of research. Okay. And then the next book is, the next book, the next biscuit is the, or the next cookie is a dosey dose. Dosey dose? Oh, dosey dose. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, which I don't know what they are either, so I'm going to pick Rich D's. Uh, either a book you love that everybody seems to hate or a book that you hate that everybody seems to love. I find hate a strong word. I don't have a think about this. Then it came to me. World War Z by Max Brooks or World War Z if you're over the other side of the Atlantic. Yeah, World War Z. I heard so much about this and I quite like a good zombie book. And I read it. Oh, you see somebody outside, do you? Oh, yes. You're not a vicious attack bomb. Shush. 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 World War Z, Max Brooks. Yeah, I read it and it's terrible. <laughs> Sorry, it is a terrible book. I do not understand why people like it. I don't get it. But hey, maybe it's me. If some people like it, that's fine. But I don't get it. What are you wiggling about for there? I'm not putting you down. Little Miss Pom. Little Miss Pom. Little... Come on, I need to finish this. Then we... What are you doing? You're trying to look out the window, are you? Okay. Next one is number seven, which is Thin Mints. And I am going to pick for our biscuit a Scottish classic, the shortbread of Petticoat Tales. And it's one of your all-time favourite books. Uh, I can go for my sort of classic ones that I would do. Uh, but I am going to do Flow My Tears, the policeman said. Uh, Philip K. Dick. Not only is it a stunning title, it's also typical Philip Dick and very bizarre about a reporter who gets transferred into the future and it all goes really, really weird. So yeah, 
so that's my ones for Tag Tuesday. And as I said, it's oh, I need to tag some fellow booktubers. I think a lot of people have done this. Uh, if you've not done it, I do it. Uh, I may have a look around and see if nobody's done it. I've seen it flying around for a while. Uh, but yeah, if you've not done it, do it. I'm rambling now anyway. So I will speak to you all very soon. I've got a few more videos coming in the next few days. I'm actually hoping to catch up. And bye for me and bye from Little Miss Growly Attack Pomeranian. <laughs> Little Miss Ruby Roundhouse. Hey. So that's bye from both of us.